Good morning. Welcome to Google I.O. Today, we are announcing a new initiative called Google Lens. Google Lens is a set of vision-based computing capabilities that can understand what you're looking at and help you take action based on that information. We'll ship it first in Google Assistant and Photos, and it'll come to other products. So how does it work? So for example, if you run into something and you want to know what it is, say a flower, you can invoke Google Lens from your assistant, point your phone at it, and we can tell you what flower it is. It's great for someone like me with allergies. <laughs> or if you've ever been at a friend's place and you've crawled under a desk just to get the username and password from a Wi-Fi router, you can point your phone at it. <laughs> and we can automatically do the hard work for you. Or if you're walking in a street downtown and you see a set of restaurants across you, you can point your phone because we know where you are and we have our knowledge graph and we know what you're looking at, we can give you the right information in a meaningful way. As you can see, we are beginning to understand images and videos. Google Assistant simplifies all the technology in your life. You should be able to just express what you want throughout your day, and the right thing should happen. With Google Lens, my assistant will be able to help with those kinds of tasks, too. I love live music, and sometimes I see info for shows around town that look like fun. Now, I can just tap the Google Lens icon and point the camera at the vent marquee. My assistant instantly recognizes what I'm looking at. Now, if I wanted to, I could tap to hear some of this band's songs, and my assistant offers other helpful suggestions right in the viewfinder. There's one to buy tickets from Ticketmaster and another to add the show to my calendar. With just a tap, my assistant adds the concert details to my schedule. Saving event. Save Stone Foxes for May 17th at 9 p.m. Awesome. My assistant helped me keep track of the event, so I won't miss the show, and I didn't have to open a bunch of apps or type anything. And today, I'm excited to announce that the Google Assistant is now available on the iPhone. You know, it's really hard to believe. We launched Google Home a little over six months ago, and we've been really busy ever since. We're announcing support for proactive assistance coming to Google Home. Home is great at providing personally relevant information for you when you ask for it, but we think it'd be even more helpful if it can automatically notify you of those timely and important messages. Today, I'm excited to announce hands-free calling coming to Google Home. <clears throat> it's really simple to use. Just ask the Google Assistant to make a call, and we'll connect you. You can call any landline or mobile number in the US or Canada completely free. Well, today we're announcing that Spotify, in addition to their subscription service, will be adding their free music service to Google Home. So it's even easier to play your Spotify playlist. We'll also be adding support for SoundCloud and Deezer, two of the largest global music services today. And these music services will join many of the others already available through the Assistant. And finally, we'll be adding Bluetooth support to all existing Google Home devices. Today, we're announcing support for visual responses with Google Home. Now to do that, we need a screen. Well, fortunately, many of us already have a ton of screens in our home today. Our phones, our tablets, even our TVs. The Google Assistant should smartly take advantage of all these different devices to provide you the best response on the right device. For example, with Google Home, I can easily get location information. OK, Google, where's my next event? Your Pokemon Go hike is at Rancho San Antonio Reserve. It's for it's my at kids. 11 it's for my today. kids, relax. <laughs> But if I want to view the directions, the best place to do it is on my phone. Well, soon you could just say, OK, Google, let's go. All right, I'm sending the best route to your phone. And we'll automatically your phone, notify your phone, whether it's Android or iOS, and take you straight to Google Maps. So you can glance at directions, interact with the map, or just start navigation. It's really simple. Now, TVs are another natural place to get help from the Google Assistant. And we have a great place to start with over 50 million Chromecast and Chromecast built-in devices. So today, we're announcing that we'll be updating Chromecast to show visual responses on your TV when you ask for help for Google Home. For example, I can now say, OK, Google, show my calendar for Saturday. Showing it on your TV. It'll show up right on the TV screen. 
I'll immediately get results from the assistant. And since the assistant detected my voice, we're showing my calendar. Others will see their calendar by using their, their voice. We can personalize the experience even on the TV. And you can continue to follow up the conversation. Uh, looks like I have a biking trip to Santa Cruz. Uh, what's the weather in Santa Cruz this weekend? This weekend in Santa Cruz, it will be clear and sunny most of the time. So today, to make us all a little less terrible people, we're announcing suggested sharing. Because we've all been there, right? Like when you're taking that group photo and you insist that it be taken with your camera, because you know if it's not on your camera, you are never seeing that photo ever again. <laughs> now, thanks to the machine learning in Google Photos, we'll not only remind you so you don't forget to share, we'll even suggest the photos and people you should share with. In one tap, you're done. The sharing tab is where you're going to be able to find all of your Google photo sharing activity. And at the top, your personal suggestions based on your sharing habits and what's most important to you. Here is the sharing suggestion that Dave got from his day bowling. Google Photos recognized this was a meaningful moment. It selected the right shots, and it figured out who he should send it to based on who was in the photos. Today, we're also announcing shared libraries. Let me show you how it works. So here, we're now looking at my Google Photos account. From the menu, I now have the option to go ahead and share my library, which I'm going to go ahead and do with my wife, Jess. Importantly, I have complete control over which photos I automatically share. I can share them all, or I can share a subset, like only photos of the kids, or only photos from a certain date forward, like when we first met. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and share all. <laughs> We did not meet today. <laughs> and that's all there is to it. Today, we're bringing it all together with the launch of photo books. They're beautiful, high quality, with a clean and modern design. But the best part is that they're incredibly easy to make, even on your phone. What used to take hours now only takes minutes. We're bringing Google Lens right into Google Photos. Let me show you. So let's say you took a trip to Chicago. There's some beautiful architecture there. And during your boat tour down the Chicago River, you took lots of photos. But it's hard to remember which building is which later on. Now, by activating Lens, you can identify some of the cool buildings in your photos, like the second tallest skyscraper in the US, Willis Tower. You can even pull up directions and get the hours for the view deck. And later, while visiting the Art Institute, you might take photos of a few paintings you really love. In one tap, you can learn more about the painting and the artist. And the screenshot that your friend sent you of that bike rental place, just add a lens, and you can tap the phone number and make the call right from the photo. We think picture in picture is the answer for many cases. So let's take a look. My kids recently asked me to build a lemonade stand. So I opened up YouTube, and I started researching DIY videos, and I found this one. Now, at the same time, I want to be able to jot down the materials I need to build for this lemonade stand. So to multitask, all I do is press the Home button, and boom, I get picture in picture. You can think of it as a kind of automatic multi-window. I can get it out of the way. I can launch Keep. I can add some more materials, so I know I need to get some uh, wood glue, like so. Then when I'm done, I just simply swipe it away like that. It's brilliant. <laughs> Picture in picture lets you do more with your phone. It works great when video calling with Duo. For example, maybe I need to check my calendar while planning a barbecue with friends. The feature is called Smart Text Selection. So let's take a look. In Android, you typically long press or double tap a word to select it. For example, I can open Gmail, I can start composing, and if I double tap the word byte, it gets selected like so. Now, we know from user studies that phone numbers are the most copy and pasted items. The second most common are named entities like businesses and people and places. In O, we're applying on-device machine learning, in this case a feed-forward neural network, to recognize these more complicated entities. So watch this. I can double tap anywhere on the phrase old coffee house, and all of it is select for me. No more fiddling around with text selection handles. It even works. Uh, for addresses. So if I double tap on the address, all of it is selected. And what's more, 
There's more. What's more is the machine learned model classifies this as an address and automatically suggests maps so I can get directions to it with a single click. And of course, it works as you expect. For phone numbers, you get the phone dialer suggested. And for email addresses, you get Gmail uh, suggested. I'm excited to give you a sneak peek into a new experience we're building for entry level Android devices. Internally, we call it Android Go. Well, I'm excited to announce that an entirely new kind of VR device is coming to Daydream, what we call standalone VR headsets. And we're working with partners to make them. So you have GPS. We call this VPS, Google's Visual Positioning Service. And we think it's going to be incredibly useful in a whole bunch of places. For example, imagine you're at Lowe's, a home improvement store that has basically everything. And if you've been there, you know it's really big. And we've all had that moment when you're struggling to find that one weird random screwdriver thing. So imagine in the future, your phone could just take you to that exact screwdriver and point it out to you on the shelf. Turns out we can do this with VPS. And let me show you how. And this is working today. So here we are walking down an aisle at Lowe's, and the phone will find these key visual feature points, which you can see there in yellow. By comparing the feature points against previously observed ones, those colorful dots in the back, the phone can figure out exactly where it is in space down to within a few centimeters. So GPS can get you to the door, and then VPS can get you to the exact item that you're looking for. 